we typically think of some languages as being more efficient, more performant than other languages. There are basically two reasons for these differences. First, some languages provide you more direct control over precisely what's going on in the machine. And when a programmer has more control, that leaves open the possibility, at least, of creating an optimal solution. It certainly is no guarantee that the programmer is going to come up with a more efficient solution, but it certainly does leave open certain opportunities for optimizing your code that you otherwise don't have when you have less control. The other reason we would say a language is slower than another is because it introduces overhead. When you use an interpreter, for instance, the interpreter itself imposes a degree of overhead, meaning the hardware does more work for the same effect. Dynamic languages also introduce overhead because every time an operation is performed, the types of the operands first have to be checked. Another source of overhead is an automatic garbage collection system. In automatic garbage collection, it's not just your code as you see it that runs. At various times during the execution of your program, the garbage collector has to run to check to see if there's something that needs to be gotten rid of. And the problem is that that check not only takes time, that check runs at effectively random times from the programmer's perspective. You can't predict when the garbage collector is going to decide to do its work, and so it's quite possible that the garbage co collector is going to be running at inopportune moments. This is particularly undesirable in a program with user interaction, because it might mean from the user's perspective that the program stutters and pauses at random moments. These pauses and stutters are a big reason why few graphically intensive games have been written in a language with garbage collection. So, if interpretation, dynamicism, and garbage collection all introduce overhead, this means the slowest languages are going to be languages like Perl, Python, Ruby, PHP, and JavaScript, and the fastest are going to be those like Assembly, C, C++, Objective-C, and Fortran. In between these two extremes, though, we have Java and c -sharp, because while Java and c -sharp both are interpreted and use garbage collection, their type system is static, or at least it's mostly static, and also, they aren't interpreted in the same way that, say, Perl and Python are. In Java and C-sharp, we first compile our code into a bytecode form, and it's the bytecode that gets interpreted. And even furthermore, in practice, Java and C-sharp use a JIT compiler, so most of the time the code that runs isn't being interpreted, it's actually been compiled and run as native machine code. So, in practice, in terms of execution time, while assembly C and similar languages are the fastest, Java and C-sharp tend to be in the same ballpark, though very often maybe five or six times slower. And then in the bottom tier, the languages at best are maybe ten times as slow, if not often a hundred times as slow. Now as for efficiency in terms of memory usage, we have basically the same tiers, with assembly and C code typically using the least memory, except in this case I would say Java and C-sharp really aren't any better than Perl and Python in that class of languages. In fact, often Java and C-sharp may be much worse in terms of memory usage because the virtual machines for Java and C-sharp are typically much larger than those uh, interpreters for, say, Python and Ruby. So if you write a program that doesn't use a lot of data in Java, but then you write the same program in Python, the Java program is going to take more memory because the VM itself is going to take up a lot more space in memory than the Python interpreter. Now what about portability? What is it about a language that allows you to take your program without making any changes yourself and having it just run on many different platforms? Portability comes down to basically three issues. First, different systems may have different processors and hence different instruction sets. So the machine code that runs on one system may not run on another. Second, in practice, most programs make heavy use of pre-existing library code. So when we use libraries but wish to maintain portability, we need to make sure those libraries are available and work exactly the same on the different platforms that we want to target. Third, and finally, for our code to be portable, our code can only make use of the capabilities that exist on all of the platforms we want to run on. Furthermore, you have to be careful that these capabilities are not just similar across platforms, but actually exactly the same. The file system on Windows, for instance, looks very similar in the broad details to the file system on Unix. But then if you look at the details, some of the capabilities are quite different. So if you wish to write a program that deals with the file system on both Unix and Windows, you have to be cognizant of these differences and either avoid any areas where there's differences in behavior, or you may just get around the problem by writing some platform-specific code. So you'd actually end up writing slightly different versions of the same program so that you can run on the different platforms. 
This may require some compromises, though, such that functionality is available on some platforms but not on others, or the functionality doesn't work exactly the same way. So, given these three hindrances to portability, different CPUs, different libraries available, and different capabilities, which languages, then, are more or less portable than others? Well, assembly language has a problem, obviously, because an assembly language is targeted for one particular processor. Outside of assembly, though, there is no reason that any one language can't be just as portable as any other. The only question is, do I have the libraries I need on all my target platforms, and do I have all the capabilities I need on my target platforms? But also, one more thing, am I okay with having to compile for every single target platform? A few decades ago, this really was a big deal, because compilation always took quite a bit of time. Today, most code can be compiled in relatively short order, as long as you tell the compiler not to do aggressive optimizations. When medium to large size programs these days are compiled, and it's taking a long time, like say on the order of hours, that's usually attributable to the compiler uh, spending a lot of time trying to optimize the code it generates. But the question still is, even if it takes hours or even maybe days to compile your code, is that really such a big deal if you're targeting three or four different platforms? Well, in practice it very well could be, because typically if we're developing for multiple platforms, as we develop we're not just going to keep compiling and testing on one system, we want to compile and test on all of our target systems. So the longer our compilations take, the bigger the hindrance to our development process. Now, as for libraries, it turns out that, mainly for reasons of historical legacy, interpreted languages have better cross-platform libraries. Java, for instance, at its inception, was sold as the language where you could write once, run anywhere. Meaning after you wrote your Java code, you compile it to bytecode, and then that code can run on any system with a Java virtual machine. Now, as for the portability problems stemming from differences in capabilities, well, no language can really help you there. For instance, if one operating system has support for 3D acceleration hardware and another doesn't, you can't write code that makes use of 3D acceleration and expect it to run on both of those systems.